Well, howdy, physics sleuths and inquisitive souls. Welcome to this episode of Dynamic Gravity. Today, we are going to talk about dark matter. Ah! I know, right? It's so scary, so scary. But <clears throat> using dynamic gravity, we can completely understand what uh, dark matter is and even dark energy too, which will be uh, uh, the next episode, I do believe. And um, it's not too hard for us to wrap our heads around to figure out what's going on um, using our mechanics, but it definitely takes a little bit of um, patience. It's not the easiest thing to do. So let's get into it. Um, this is uh, from NASA, NASA.gov. And they're basically saying, look, Einstein's equations fail miserably once we get out of the solar system and he can't he can't calculate anything. <laughs> so obviously Einstein must be right because, you know, uh, why would he be wrong? <laughs> well, the only way that can happen is if they create this mystical particle or whatever it is, mysterious dark force that is here yet nowhere and it's all around us and it's touching us but yet we can't touch it and it interacts with us gravitationally wise but no other way and it's 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 a it's a, it's a mess it's a hot mess so yeah their their best uh contender to explain this are like wimps like weakly interactive uh particles i believe it is weakly interactive massive particles and machos um and it's just basically saying that there's something, some new particle, some exotic something that they can't detect that they, uh, you know, they think is causing dark, dark matter. And they can't detect it. All the tests, they've done like 300, 400 different test experiments throughout the world to try and detect it. Every last one of them have failed miserably. Um, they just can't make it work. And uh, here's another thing about dark matter, the, you know, Einstein's equations, you know, they should be up around, uh, I think it was right here on this line is what's predicted using his equations. And yet this is what we're actually getting. It's a huge difference. And the, the further on it goes, the worse it gets. So <laughs> let's, uh, let's break into this and unpack it and see if we can't uh, explain this through our theory of gravity, dark uh, dynamic gravity, the best gravity. Okay. <clears throat> oh, oh, I didn't know it saved. Interesting. This is actually going to be a soon episode as well. Uh, this is the final portion of the uh, math equation for dynamic gravity. Yes, I have worked it out. I have done this all by myself with no help from not a damn soul on this planet. Um, because they all told me I was crazy because I didn't have the math. So after 25 years of uh, searching and, and studying and doing everything I need, I finally figured out the math. This is not all of it. This is just the very last stage. Don't worry. I'm going to explain it when the time comes. First, let's deal with uh, dark matter. <laughs> so dark matter, it, uh, it shows up in galaxies mostly, right? And... Uh, you got your galactic core, black hole in the center, you know, and, and then you got the, the galaxy that's kind of doing, you know, these little swirly things. And, uh, you know, you got all the little stars here. And uh, the stars, they're all rotating. Let's see if we do this here. They are all rotating. Can I rotate this? I guess I can't. I thought it would. Oh, there we go. They're rotating this direction. They're rotating. Um, they're all the same, kind of very similar to what this diagram is looking. And that's not what's predicted, but that's what we see. That's what we observe when we look at this through telescopes. So how is this happening? Well, if we zoom in on the galaxy, um, what we're going to see is a bunch of stars, right? A bunch of stars. <laughs> And they're all going to be, coincidentally, I don't know, 5, 10, 15, maybe 20 light years apart. And, uh, you know, if they're happy little mediums, depending on how large they are, we'll get into that. That's a kind of a dark energy thing going on as well. <laughs> but what's going on with um, dynamic gravity to explain what's happening here is uh, there's two components to gravity. There's the 
attract a pulling component. It's associated with the, the negative entity of the, the force through dynamic gravity. And then there's the anti-gravity effect, the repulsive gravity effect um, that I explained during my uh, initial you know, video. And if you're lost, go and watch that, and that will help give you a little context what we're doing here. <laughs> so not only are all these stars pulling on each other, as close to possible, but they're also pushing away each other. And they end up finding uh, equilibrium. Uh, the point, which is probably about five, 10 light years away from each other, we'll do the math and calculations for that later, um, basically showing that that's where they're stable, okay? <clears throat> if they get any closer, they're getting too much pushing force and not as much pulling, and it's gonna drive them further back. And if they're getting uh, too close, or too far away, then there'll be no pushing force and just the, the pulling force, which will keep them back in tow. So they're kind of locked, and mostly they're locked at these distances. So we can have, like, say, this sphere of influence that all of these stars have. And you can see they're all pretty much, you know, about neck to neck pushing in on each other, you know? <clears throat> So, what happens is um, when these are moving around, like, say, the galaxy we had, when it's rotating around, and these are, say, uh, maybe a little speck right here in this little wing, or maybe right here, or anywhere along in the galaxy. Say, we're, we're taking a zoom in of this particular picture to see what it's going to look like. <coughs> As they're spinning, uh, the the center galactic massive black hole on the center of the galaxy is spinning and it's frame dragging all of those in the same direction that it's spinning in. So that's why galaxies are always going to spin in the same direction their their black hole, their massive black hole in the center of the galactic core is, is rotating in. It's never going to be opposite. I mean, unless maybe it inverts itself and you get some weird funky action going on, which is totally possible. But <clears throat> for the most part, this is the rule. There's always an exception to the rule, but this is the rule. So let's say that all of these are just being swirled around, right? And you see they're all being swirled together. And if I If I push on one of them, like if I were to push on this guy right here, he is going to push and turn on all of his, his neighbors, his neighboring stars, and they're going to push back. So the best way to look at this is all the solar systems are essentially like beach balls, right? You know, with their, their star in the center. <laughs> and a beach ball, you know, when you push two beach balls together, they kind of compress a little bit, you know, and give. But for the most part, they're resisting each other. You know, they're, they're a barrier that is uh, stopping the other beach ball from just going right through it on straight to whatever trajectory you're trying to take it. They're, 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 they're running interference essentially. So <clears throat> you have all of these guys that are pushing up on each other. So when one push it gets pushed, they all get pushed. But guess what? They're all also equally getting pushed at the same time by the black hole. Now, some more than others because some weigh more than others, some weigh less than others, you know? So some are going to be affected more by the black hole spinning, which is why you do see a drop off in the curve, but not a huge one because the, the, the positive force of dynamic gravity, the repulsive force, they're all going to be pushing against each other. So essentially, if you push on one star, it's going to push on all of its neighbors. And that is the reason why when you have an entire galaxy that's spinning, uh, uh, you know, in the direction <coughs> that all the stars are spinning, it, you know, roughly give or take about the same speed. Um, I hope that explains it. I'm trying to think of a, another better way to explain it. But like I said, it's not a difficult concept. Just visualize you have a bag of beach balls and you're pulling the whole bag around you in a circle. <clears throat> you know, it, it's not like um, that you pull it, the, the beach balls closest to you are going to move first and then the other beach balls are going to move second. No, they're all kind of bound together in this bag and they're all pushing on each other. So when you put a force on one of them or just the ones on the wall that you're pulling on the with your, your bag, all of them are going to move in the same direction once they, you know, achieve equilibrium. 
which is what happens in the universe. The universe loves to be in equilibrium. Uh, this is nature's happy place. And so this is what, you know, you tend to look for uh, in most systems is where is the equilibrium? And then you can see what's going on with the system and how it's, you know, wrong or what it's trying to do. <laughs> so ultimately, I hope that explains dark matter um, and what's actually going on. Um, it's not a hard concept. It's just you got to sit down and think it for a little bit and visualize as best visualize. Everything is best when you visualize it. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, put them in the comments. You know, I'll try and answer. Um, if I need to make another video that explains it differently, I'll do that if people aren't getting it. But it seems like a pretty relatively simple concept to me. So hopefully uh, you guys now you know what dark matter really is. It's not some exotic particle that, you know, uh, we're going to detect if we just build that new trillion dollar, you know, uh, uh, you know, detector under in a mine shaft, you know, a mile below. They're never going to find it. It's not it's not there to find. That's all it comes down to. It's not a particle. It's it's nothing like that. It's just simply the repulsive force of gravity acting through uh, celestial bodies interacting with each other in equilibrium. So uh, I hope that explains everything. Uh, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And I uh, wish you guys have a good day. Talk to you later. Bye. Like, subscribe, submit.